Welcome to another presentation of Pinsky Law Presents. Today we're going to talk about required reports for contracted fire companies. In other words, these are the reports that are required for those fire companies who contract with a fire district, a town, or a village to provide fire protection. Now, today's lectures can be found in the Fire Department Lawn Management Resource Manual, pages 408 to 409, and also in the Fire Service Secretary and Treasurer's Manual, pages 155 to 169, and both contain very detailed recants of this lecture. So in 2018, a new rule went into effect, a new law went into effect, which requires a fire company who enters into a contract with a town, a fire district, or a village to produce various documents before entering into contract negotiations. Now these documents are about four or five in number, and they include a statement itemizing the estimated costs of the fire company, which are attributable to the provision of services under the prospective contract. In other words, the fire company must provide the town, village, or fire district with a list of the estimated costs that relate directly to the contract, not to other things that are unrelated to the contract. In other words, if you're going to receive money from a source other than the contract and use that money for a purpose of other than providing fire protection under that contract, then you don't have to provide those uh, accountings. So, what does the estimated cost include? Well, the law provides very specific examples. Supplies, materials, the operation, maintenance, and repair of equipment and apparatus, cost of insurance, training, protective clothing, like turnout gear, PPE, other personnel costs, rental, maintenance, and operation of your firehouse or facilities, and a specified proportionate share of capital costs. In other words, capital costs are things like the building, uh, vehicles, and other big, large, hard equipment. And normally this would be contained in a depreciation schedule, so we'll talk about it in a moment. Now, the law also requires four additional documents, which are most likely required to be provided by the contracted fire company to the town, village, or fire district. This includes an annual report of the board of directors, which is required by not-for-profit corporation law section 519 anyway to be prepared. It includes the most recent verified certificate, which is required by not-for-profit corporation law section 1402. Again, another report that's required to be filed and prepared regardless of this new law. The most recent internal revenue service form 990, and this we'll talk about uh, at the outset and the most recent annual report, which is required by General Municipal Law Section 30-A. We'll go on more in depth, but this is your 2% money report, how you've spent it if you've received it. So let me make one very straightforward, blunt statement. Many fire companies, treasurers, are not doing an adequate job of preparing and maintaining financial reports. And why? It's because it's difficult. Being a treasurer takes more than just goodwill, more than just a desire to do a good job. It requires a very detailed knowledge of how to create and maintain financial records. And this is not easy to do. But if you have a treasurer who's capable of using QuickBooks, for example, they could maintain, and hopefully do maintain, a detailed line item income and expense report which shows all the proper categories needed for each one of these reports. If this is done, then the company can easily prepare, or have prepared on its behalf, a full Form 990. Now there are three different versions of the Form 990, the full form, a EZ form, which is less complete and doesn't have all the information necessary to provide uh, the town, village, or fire district with this information, or what's called a 990N, which is very simply a small postcard uh, filing. Each one of these depends on the income and assets 
of the fire company. And uh, if you, for example, receive very little money uh, from fire protection contracts and every other source totally, you could file a 990N or a 990EZ. But if you receive enough money in total income, you're going to have to file the, 99, the full 990. But there are good reasons to file the full 990 anyway, and you'll see what those are momentarily. So many treasurers, frankly, are just not trained to properly use QuickBooks. And just because they do enter information into QuickBooks doesn't mean it's being done properly. This is something where you shouldn't just take the only interested person right, who wants to serve as treasurer to prepare these documents, to prepare these financial records. What we suggest is you hire a bookkeeper or a clerk or even train, if, if that's uh, what the treasurer is willing to do, train your treasurer in how to properly maintain QuickBooks. Now, I will note that the Pinsky Law Group maintains financial records for many, many fire companies and ambulance services. And we also prepare hundreds of 990s uh, every year. And we also pr provide training for treasurers to help them learn how to use QuickBooks. One of the things we do, which uh, we would suggest you have your accountant or uh, somebody else, uh, like your attorney, if they have a financial record background, um, they could prepare the categories, the income and expense categories for QuickBooks. And that will go a very long way to helping out your fire company. So, in short, if your fire company will maintain detailed income and expense categorized QuickBooks files and will uh, file the full 990, then you will find everything I'm about to say very easy because all of that would then be contained in this information. So what has to be in the annual report of the board of directors? Now, I won't get too far off topic, but I will tell you that many fire companies are not aware that they have to have an active board of directors because under Section 701 of the Not-for-Profit Corporation Law, the directors are actually legally in charge of the corporation and, in fact, can be personally liable for the mismanagement of the funds of the corporation. So there needs to be proper oversight of the uh, board of directors and proper oversight by the board of directors of the corporation, over the corporation. But each year, the law requires that the board of directors file an annual report. And then this law requires that the board of directors report be given to the town, village, or contracted uh, fire district. So what has to be in that report? Well, it's the assets of the corporation, of the fire company, the liabilities of the fire company, for instance, like loans uh, for fire trucks, firehouse mortgage, etc. And it has to be within a 12-month period, which is about six months current. You also have to have on the report the principal changes in assets and liabilities, including if there are any restricted or trust funds, which is rare. You have to have the revenue receipts of the fire department, both restricted and unrestricted. And by unrestricted, I mean if there were any gifts given to the fire company that could only be used for a certain purpose. I will tell you, just so you know, the IRS frowns on those types of gifts. And finally, the report has to have the expenses or disbursements of the fire department for both general and restricted purposes. And again, hopefully we try to avoid restricted purposes because the IRS frowns on those. So where would all this come from? Well, again, if you filed the full 990, this is all going to be in there. And if you have a full detailed income and expense uh, categorized QuickBooks records, then this will all be in there as well and is very easy to provide. What I normally tell our clients is, look, if you have the full 990, just submit that as your annual report and then give that to the town, village, or fire district you contract with. There is another annual report and that requires the number of members in the fire department as of the date, a statement which shows the increase and decrease of the members, and actually this is on your full Form 990 as well, and a statement of the place where the names and addresses and the residents of the current members may be found, and that could be as simple as we maintain them in the offices of the corporation. Now, I will tell you, if you contract with a town and you're located in a fire protection district and your main contract and your main protection area is that fire protection district and you contract with that town, they better have the names and addresses of your members because that's going to be needed for the volunteer firefighters benefit law protection. But if this is just an additional area you provide services to, such as you are located in a fire protection district, 
but you also cover a village or a city or a fire district, they may not have that information. So you just have to tell them you can find that in the offices of the corporation. Now, not-for-profit corporation law 1402, paragraph F, requires that a verified certificate with certain information be filed with the county clerk of the county in which you're located on or before January 15th. Now, I will tell you, because we file this report for our clients, most counties have no idea what to do with this report. They have absolutely no idea that it's required, and they have no place to put it. So they sometimes charge you $15 just to put it in a miscellaneous report. What that means is you couldn't fi find it in their filing if you wanted to. It oftentimes gets lost. So what we suggest is, and I'll go through what has to be in this report, make sure that you get a file stamped copy of this filing of the report and that you then provide that to the village, fire district, or town which you can contract. What has to be in it? It's very simple. The names and directors, uh, the names of the directors and officers of the fire department, an inventory of the property. Now, this you'll take off of a depreciation schedule if you file one, and most don't, or you'll take it off the other reports list of assets, which is basically your vehicles. Where would you find the list of assets? On your insurance forms, because you are going to provide that to your insurance carrier so they will cover all of those assets. That's what you should be grabbing this from. And it's a good time to check your insurance to make sure you've listed all of your vehicles and all your major property that you want covered and insured. Also, a statement of its liabilities. In other words, what loans do you have? What money do you owe, such as a mortgage or a vehicle purchase? And finally, just a simple statement that the fire department has not engaged, directly or indirectly, in any business other than set forth in a certificate of incorporation. This is a good time to check your certificate of incorporation. Now, I'm not going to get off on this tangent because we also have another session of Pinsky Law Presents, which discusses the importance of the, con of the contents of your certificate of incorporation. So I'm going to refer you to that lecture. Then there's the Foreign Fire Insurance Report. This is the last of the four reports, plus a list of other information, that you have to give to the village, fire district, or town with which you contract. Now... If the 2% monies, foreign fire insurance monies, are given to a benevolent, this doesn't apply to you. But if the fire company receives them directly, this report has to be prepared. It will be very difficult to prepare this report if you do not keep all of the monies in a separate bank account. 2% monies must be kept in a separate bank account, separate from every other fund you have. Why? Because you have to account for the income that's produced, the expenses that are taken from that account, the interest that's generated. You have to keep it separate. And if you do, such as in a separate QuickBooks record in the same uh, fire department account, but a separate record of that uh, bank account, you will have an easy time preparing this report. It basically asks, how much did you take in, and what did you spend it on, and how much do you have left? But this has to go to the town with which you contract, or the fire district, or the village. Again, easily done in QuickBooks. So, that's the end of the information that you need to know. But let me restate, if you are not keeping detailed records using QuickBooks, showing the income and expenses that you take in, that you pay out, and you're not keeping track of all the inventory that you want insured in your insurance forms, you are going to have a very difficult time providing these records. And I will also note, you're going to have a very difficult time making sure that you have accounted for all the monies and that no monies have been improperly diverted, such as stolen by somebody. That's a topic for another session of Pinsky Law Presents. So for today, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Pinsky Law Presents. See you next time.